Now, it might be too early in the year to call this, but it's no doubt The Wandering Earth 2 is a massive success. And it's a great film. We gave it three and a half stars out of five, and there's a link on the screen if you want to watch our review. But there were some bits in the movie I feel deserve some further discussion. So join me in the comments section with your take on my points. Don't forget, this is my personal opinion. And if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments section below. And this video is full of spoilers about the movie. Please watch this at your own risk. One of the biggest things I found annoying about the film was how easy it seemed to be to hack into the Wandering Earth project. At one point in the film, they said something ridiculous, like they had fought off over 700 million hacking attempts in one year, but that there were still many successful ones. One of the biggest scenes in the movie occurs early on with the hacking of the space elevator by an unknown source. We later find out at the end of the film what that source was, and perhaps that goes far enough to explain why the hacking was so easy. But it still makes very little sense to me why such an important project for the world was able to be hacked so easily. Now, it's obvious it wasn't a DDoS-style attack or script kiddies doing the work. It was clear that more sophisticated methods were involved. But the hack that was able to crash the space elevators was a pretty serious one. And the fact it took so long to detect and override seems a little unbelievable. We then see a scene where a few of the people working for the hackers are able to get onto the space elevators in a kind of suicide mission, where they detonate a bomb that's been planted on the outside of the elevator. Thank God in this scene, the wolf warrior was able to come to the rescue. But before that bit, everything just seemed so easy. The fact that Pei Xiang got onto that particular space elevator in the first place seemed to show the security was rather slack. He wasn't supposed to be on that elevator. He was just there to give Dordor some flowers. But then those terrorists, or suicide bombers without bombs, are able to steal the ID cards of the other astronauts really easily and create their own ID cards where they're able to perform some simple overrides. This just seems a little too far-fetched. This would be one of the most secured projects ever developed. Heck, even the scene later in the film where the cryptographers are trying to crack the nuclear weapons codes takes longer to hack than the space elevator. Which begs the question, why is such an important piece of infrastructure connected to the consumer internet? But I'll talk about the internet a bit later. In order for the Wandering Earth project to be a reality, the world's governments had to unite to finalize what the project would look like. Thus, we have the creation of the UEG, United Earth Government. Kind of like the UN, but they seem to actually do something rather than complaining all the time and ignoring the real issues of the world. The headquarters of the UEG, which suffers multiple terrorist incidents during the first hour of the movie, is based in New York. Now this kind of makes sense, as the UN is also headquartered in New York in something called International Territory, where international laws apply only. But since this is a completely new organization, or government, I was left wondering why they're still in New York. Now I can hear you say, you've already explained it Artie Dan's, New York has international territory, and that's fine and all, but this is a Chinese movie. But part of me can't help but think why China wouldn't want to locate this in an area more friendly to their terms. The Chinese contingent play an important part in this movie. In the end, it would appear that the Wandering Earth Project is China's baby, as is evident by Joe at the end demanding that the Earth thrusters are put online when he says so. The setting of New York actually leads to another discussion about locations in the film. The two major Chinese cities, Beijing and Shanghai, are shown to be inhabitable, with Beijing in particular being completely underwater. That makes sense for a city that's so close to the sea. But last time I checked, New York was also close to the sea. Although if I remember correctly, there's some kind of wall that surrounds New York to stop the rising sea levels from drowning out the city. Why couldn't the same thing happen for Beijing? The world as we know it right now is a particularly politically fickle thing, and I can't imagine it would improve too much in the future. But perhaps this movie is telling us that a disaster like this can unite the world. Either way, why do the headquarters have to be in New York? 
This point relates back to the first one, about how easy it seems to be to bypass security checks in the Wandering Earth project, the most important project for civilization. But the energy that runs her memory, the 550A model, only allows two minutes of digital life. The new 550C, with its improved computing power, would allow her to live forever, which makes sense as these computers are tasked with building the Earth engines, a rather complex piece of engineering, so keeping a digital avatar alive should be a piece of cake. What's amazing about what Tu Hang Yu does is how far he gets before anyone even attempts to stop him. He gets past security with his keycard after hours, which should have been the first trigger. In fact, what's most surprising here is that there's no one around guarding the supercomputer, especially considering all the terrorist incidents that keep occurring. He then makes it so far as to start uploading Yaya into the 550W, or MOS as it later calls itself. He isn't even stopped by Uncle Ma, who seems to secretly support him, right? Now here is a confusing bit where I need your help. He uploads her at this point and is then arrested and thrown up. But now it got me thinking, was this a different computer? Did he need to re-upload her to a different model? And if so, does that mean she exists in two different supercomputers? I don't recall what 550 model it was, but it couldn't have been an A or a W, so it must have been a C, because there's that touching scene where father and daughter are reunited, and then he inputs the code into the system. Very slowly, by the way, which makes no sense as they are AI and they could do it in the blink of an eye, but it wouldn't make for good cinema now, would it? And then at the end, we see the digital versions of themselves seem to have multiplied and, oh my God, I just realized how confusing this whole thing is. Please, someone, anyone, if you have a better theory, please tell me below. Speaking of the internet restoration scene, this was by far the most confusing and irritating scene in the movie for me. We are at a point where the Earth engines need to be turned on, but to do that, the internet needs to be restored to send the signal. The internet had previously been shut off due to reasons. Maybe they learned their lesson about the hacking. Anyway, what makes absolutely no sense here is why all the engines are connected to the old, archaic, cable-bound internet. It's 2058, and wireless and microwave technology would be far more pervasive, and dare I say it, it would be the norm. Heck, even now in 2023, we have 5G and Starlink. Throughout the movie, people are receiving messages on their mobile phones and using their devices to search for information, which as far as I know is all distributed via a data network on the mobile platform. So then the question begs, why aren't the Earth engines just connected to a mobile network that already exists in the movie? Now this is an issue I brought up in my review of the movie. And if you want to check that out, don't forget to click on the link in the description or at the end of the video. But this bit really doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make sense to you? If so, please explain why. And if I'm wrong, please tell me why too. Now this bit is bound to lead to a bit of a discussion because very clearly there are hidden messages. And I know that doesn't make sense. If it's hidden, how can it be clear? But stick with me as I try to explain. I don't think it's a stretch for me to say that as of right now, in 2023, the planet is in a little bit of a political football match. Without taking any sides in this debate, and there are many sides of this debate you can take, we've got left wing, right wing, chicken wing, and all the other kinds of wings you could imagine fighting it out for control, power, and a say in our life. The very first contentious point of the movie is the United Earth government, a one world government that, depending on who you listen to, might already exist. But in this movie, it's clear that it's the direction the Earth will take in the future. With this one world government comes control, absolute control and a military state. We see the power of the military many times in this film, although sometimes they're pretty useless, such as when the HQ building is infiltrated. It's not hard to see the allegory of this in fascism or communism. Some people might even call it socialism, but let's not go there. The whole idea here is that there is a government controlling what will happen and it's clear they don't care what the people think when there's a scene that explains that support for the Digital Life Project is higher among the population than the Wandering Earth Project. Now this is quite a delicate discussion, one I'm not sure I'm well equipped to handle, so I'm looking forward to the fire in the comments section, but there is a very clear implication here that government control is needed and is the only thing that can save the world from impending doom. And if we've learned only one thing from climate change, it's that having one organization telling the whole world what to do doesn't seem like a smart thing when parts of the world can just ignore them. Now I open up the comment section to you. What do you think of my five discussion points and what details can you add? 
Is there anything else that happened in the film that you feel deserves further exploration? All I ask is that you be respectful to each other in the comments and don't personally attack anyone. I will be watching you. I am the United Earth government. <laughs> but no, seriously, respect everyone. Thank you for watching this video. Please press like if you enjoyed it. Check out some of our other Wandering Earth or Asian movie videos. Subscribe if you like this and otherwise, I will catch you next time.